Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So hi to everyone. So now we come back to my class. So today we are going to continue with uh, sub chapter of power and torque. And now, so this is uh, the okay some of the description of the power and torque, particularly in induction machine. So whereby transformer has electric power output from secondary. All right, this is the a bit on the uh, to to recap on what transformer is all about. So it has a an electrical power output from secondary, but in, uh, for induction motor <coughs> has no electric power uh, from rotor as it is shorted out. So this is the difference between the transformer and also the, uh, the induction machine. So only mechanical power output from rotor. Basically, this is the, the function of uh, a motor where we have the electrical power as input and we have the mechanical power as its output. And then uh, down here is actually the power flow of the machine and we have we start with the input power p in so the one in this yellow box and the formula we have where p in equal to square root 3 vt the terminal voltage all right the il the line current and the flow factor cos theta so this is how we actually calculate the uh, input power of the induction machine so it is uh, apparently calculated or represented in electrical element so we have we do have all the uh, again the electrical element consists of uh, the vt the determinant voltage the il the line current as well as the cos theta right. and <clears throat> so once we have uh, calculated or we have done with the p in so we move on to the first losses namely the P L C L or the stator copper loss. So this happen again, uh, especially at the uh, stator winding. All right, and then second we have uh, the core losses P core or the uh, it happen at the R R C. And then in between uh, the power the the core losses. And also the RCL, the total copper losses, we have the air gap power. Okay, the losses in terms of air gap. So this gives us an idea that this part or this side is actually occurring at the stator side of the of the machine. Okay, and then the air gap is uh, actually the uh, what they call it the, the to differentiate between the stator and also the, the rotor and right after the air gap power or the air gap losses we have the prcl the rotor copper copper losses okay and these two uh, these two mean the pscl and the rcl prcls are known as i square r losses or in other words, we can say that this is actually the electrical losses. Okay. The I square R losses consists of again the PCL, the stator copper losses, and also the RCL, the proto, proto copper losses. Okay. And then again, sorry, for the P core, the core losses just now, this is again. Uh, occur due to the uh, he or the hysteresis losses and the eddy current effect okay that that can place at the stator and then uh, the conversion p the p conversion whereby mechanical power is being induced all right so now we have come to the region of mechanical power okay and separated by the P conversion or T induced induced torque omega m. Okay, this is the equations uh, associated with the 
P convention. Okay. And from here, we will see the P friction and windage losses, or known as P, F, and W. All right. The friction and windage losses that are caused by the bearing of the motor, the rotor, the shaft especially, and then the seal, and also the power that consumed by the motor cooling fan. Okay, this is what we can understand by the term of friction and windage, windage losses. So the stray or the miscellaneous uh, losses is, at, uh, is located at the end of the flow. So this is about 0.9 or up to 1.8% affected out of the rated, rated power. Okay, it's very, very less or very small amount of uh, stray losses. And then finally, this is the clean output power, P out, and it equation. We have the uh, load torque over here as well as the as well as the machine speed. Okay, in radians. Okay, omega m. All right. So some of the again uh, the description how is power loss in induction machine or induction motor. So we have mechanical F and W losses, friction and bearing, assist and power consumed by the motor cooling fan. And then we have the magnetic core losses. This is uh, due to exercise and the current losses in steel lamination of the stator as well as the, the rotor. And then we have we jump over to the electrical I square R losses. Again, uh, consists of stator winding losses and also the rotor conductor bar losses and then finally last but not least the stray losses or the miscellaneous losses associated with mainly with uh, electromagnetic radiation about 1% to 1.8% operated output according to IPPE standard 112 90 some of the definition of the losses available in power flow of uh, induction machine and next is uh, the again the equivalent circuit of the induction machine just to recap what we have uh, seen or we have uh, learned in the previous video so we have the p phase over here right on the left side of the diagram so we have all the rotor part or the equivalent rotor impedance in uh, consists of the S1 and R1 as well as I1. So we come before we come to the excitation branch. So the excitation branch where we have the magnetizing currents, <coughs> sorry, as well as the uh, the reactance, the magnetizing reactance, as well as the the core loss that consists of a series plus and the current effect. Okay, and then the induced voltage over here. Before we come to the rotating part, the secondary part consists of again the GX2 as well as the R2 over S. Remember S is the, is the slip of the motor. Okay. And then the rotor uh, or the machine output uh, current. So this is again uh, the formula where I1 equal to V phase over Z EQ and what is Z EQ? All this all the impedance inside this uh, diagram or inside this equivalent circuit. So we have the EQ, the equivalent impedance equal to R1 plus the X1. This is obviously from secondary, uh, so this is primary part, okay, the stator, I mean. And this is again, what? This is actually nothing but admittance. Remember GC, this is actually 1 over 1 over RC. This is taken from the magnetizing branch over here. All right. Okay, one I circled a few times over here. And then what is not RL but RC, don't get, don't get confused. So we have VM over here. This is actually, okay, this is the, the name of the GC is conductance. And then VM the is the admittance. So this is again a thing one over z x sorry x m okay the net netizing reactance of the station branch. So this is subsystem again. Uh, B m is subsystem of uh, 
metazing inductor. So this is again the R2 over S and JX2 here. This is for the secondary part or the rotor part of the machine. And out uh, out of that, so we are actually able to come up with this formula. So the stator couple losses PCL equal to 3I square R, I1 square R, R1. Okay, this is again at the uh, stator part of the machine. Okay, this one. So this uh, impedance represents again the uh, stator copper, copper loss, and this is the uh, specific equation. So about the core losses, so the core losses will be 3E1 squared G PC. And this again taking place at the magnetizing, magnetizing brush over here. Okay, RCE1. Uh, GCE1, I mean, and then the air gap power, so PAG equal to P in minus P, SEL minus P, P core, or in short, we can directly use formula of 3 I2 squared R2 over, over S. If you go to power flow, you can see that P, sorry, PAG is located over here, and let me change the color. Okay, this, P, this PAG all right, this PAG is actually P in, all right, so P in minus PSEL, the first losses, and then the second losses is P, P core, before you come to PAG. Again, the PAG is actually P in, okay, the total input power, minus the first loss, PCL, and minus the second loss is P, P core. From there, you can obtain the net PAG, the air gap uh, power, as what stated in this equation or this relationship. Okay, PAG equal to P in minus P SEL minus P core. Again, you can also uh, use directly this type of equation in order to calculate the PAG. And then what about the roto copolysis PRCL? This is again nothing but 3i r square i r and r r is actually the i2 and r2 and if you try to uh, relate between pag and also prcl so you can see that prcl is actually s p a s p a g right so once you know the s the slip of the motor and this is known and then you can directly calculate pr CL. So next, this slide tells us about the developed mechanical power or the P conversion. So whereby the electrical power is then converted to mechanical power. So what is the uh, relationship? So we have again P conversion equal to PAG minus PRCL. This is stated again in this power flow okay let me change the color uh, to uh, uh, yellow for example so this p convention the one i circle is actually originated from pag okay next to it the one i color i circle in yellow minus prcl all right the coming pag you minus uh, the first loss which is prcl and then you may get p conversion over here this line okay. uh, then we can also uh, derive from previous equation so let me derive for you so we have a red, a red color over here so we have p conversion again the one i box in red line so we have p conversion equal to pag uh, minus prcl so peg is what so PAG is so with minus P uh, R C L so equal so this is equal PAG is three I two squared R two over S right so we have minus three I two squared so this you can get this from previous slide. No worries. I just copied again here. 
Okay. And then factorize. So we have 3 I2 squared and R, R2. All right. And we have in bracket 1 over S minus 1. Okay. And thus P conversion equal to right, 3 I 2 squared R2 in bracket 1 minus S over OS. Alright, so you simplify from here into here and giving this equation just like this. This one in, in this box. And then, uh, yes, we can also calculate from here. We know that PAG equal to PRCL. So PRCS just now is SPAG. And then we can again, uh, we can again uh, simplify the equation equal to 1 minus SPAG. Or the power, uh, output power, the P conversion again minus P F N W minus P. Is three or miscellaneous p. So again, if you look at the uh, power flow, we have p out over here. So this is originated from p conversion. Okay. So what after p conversion we have p f and w. So the first loss after p conversion again. So the first loss after p conversion is p f and w, and the second loss is p three losses okay so deducting p f and w and p3 from p conversion giving us the p p out okay then you go back to here so we know that p out is p conversion minus p f and w minus p miscellaneous or p3 so what about the induced stock so the induced stock is nothing but here p conversion over omega omega m okay the, uh, the the motor speed so again p conversion is 1 minus s p a g all right and then uh, p omega omega m the one we have seen earlier 1 minus s omega mega sin so p a g over omega mega in mega uh, sorry mega sin is the final or simplified equation for induced induced stock Again, so after we have done with the analysis of the covalent circuit, so it come to us that uh, R1, X, S1, over here, this is R1, okay, this is actually the uh, stator copper loss. So this uh, uh, station brand is actually for the happening, uh, the, uh, the core loss. And then we have the uh, rotor copper loss over here, as well as the conversion loss or P conversion over here. Right, and thus uh, R conversion equal to R2 of uh, S minus R, or this is equal to R2 1 over 1 minus S over over S. Now, the efficiency so, how we do, do actually calculate or uh, analyze? So, in general, we have efficiency equal to output over input minus 100%. So, it is in general, and then we can also. Uh, it can it may also represent in this formula we have output over output plus losses which is particularly applicable to generators and we do also this type of equation okay we have input minus losses over input this is particularly applicable to to motor okay okay now example number two so uh, 480 volt, 480 volt, so there's a minimum voltage, so the frequency Fe over here is, uh, okay, let me write, so, so this is dv, this is dt, so the 50 uh, HP, this is the power, so three-phase induction motor, so the three-phase induction motor is drawing uh, 60 ampere, this is the video of I at 0 0.8 power. Uh, power factor this is the cos uh, theta for example uh, lagging and then the stator corpus losses are 2 kilowatt so this is dp 
SCL and the rotor core are 700 watts. So this is PRCL. The friction and winding stresses are 600 watts. So this is P, F, and W. So the core losses, again, this is P core is 1,800 watts. And the stray losses are negligible. So P stray equal to 0 watts. So find the following quantities, the aggregate power PAG, so the co power converter, the conversion power P conversion. So the output power PR as well as the uh, efficiency of the efficiency of the of the motor. Okay, look at the uh, solution. For example, number two. So we start with the uh, question A. Here, so the aggregate power is just the input power minus the stator i square r losses. Uh, therefore, the input power is given by so p in square root 3 v t i l cos theta. So again, this is from the question. This is also from question i l as well as the power factor 0 0.85. So don't forget to multiply by right? square root 3. All right. So this uh, giving us the value of p in equal to 42.4 kilo kilowatt. All right. So and thus. PAG again from the power flow diagram. So we have P in minus PSCL minus P, P core. So P in is the value here. We just calculate minus PSCL. This is given, I believe, in the question. And P core also provided in question. So you solve the question or solve the step, giving us PAG equal to 38.6 kilo, kilowatt. And then B from the power flow diagram again, the power converted from article to mechanical form is P conversion equal to PAG minus PR, PRCL. So PAG is just obtained previously and this is provided in, provided in question and giving the final P conversion of the power converted from article to mechanical equal to 37.9 kilowatt. C again from the power flow diagram, so the output power is given by PR equal to uh, power converted, converted power minus P, F, and W, the friction and windage, one inch minus P, miscellaneous. So 37.9 kilowatt minus 600 watt. This is again from the question. And it say that the stray power is equal to zero and giving us the power output or the output power equal to 37.3 kilowatt. Or in horsepower, so remember one HP equal to 0 0.7646 kilowatt or you can simply write 746 watt and then uh, we have the uh, the exchange of the unit so p out in term of hp 37.3 kilowatt multiplied by 1 hp over 0 0.746 kilowatt giving us the final value in hp is 60 or oh, sorry 50 horse horsepower all right. So then, uh, therefore, the induction efficiency is uh, P out over P in multiplied by 100%. P, a, P out 37.3 and P in we just calculated in the uh, first example on the first question. And this is the final efficiency of the of the motor. Okay. Example number three, a 208 volt. Okay, this is uh, the VT, the three phase VT. Remember, this is a terminal voltage, the four pole P equal to four. All right, so this is again the, uh, the frequency, the system frequency, vertical frequency, this Y connected. All right, so we have the star or the Y connected motor. One rotor induction motor is stated at uh, 15 H, HP. So it's equivalent circuit. Components are R1. So we have R2, we have X1, we have X2 as well as the XSM. So P mechanical equal to 300 watt. So we have P miscellaneous or stray losses equal to 0 and core losses equal to 200 watt. So given slip S equal to 0 0.05 or S equal to 5%. So you are required to answer line current to find line current to start find the PSEL, define the PAG, P conversion into stock, uh, the loop stock, 
Okay, ada overall uh, machine efficiency again. So the motor speed in RPM. So the N, uh, M, and also the radian per second in radian, the N, the omega M. Right. So the solutions. So the equivalent circuit of this dash motor is shown below. So this is basically the equivalent circuit of the IM dash motor. So we have the emission current IA. So we have the V phase over here. So remember this is a Y connected type of motor. So we have over here the relationship of the V phase. This is equal to 3 square root V square root 3B in line. Alright, so what about the I phase? So I phase Oops, this is equal to I, I line. So, no difference. So, this is the R1, JS1, uh, JX2, R2. So, this is the JXM. So, this is the R2, 1 over S, minus, uh, 1 minus S over, over S. All right. So, how to get 2.413? So, this is uh, from R2. R2 is 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Two seven, all right. Just directly calculate from the equation. So we have one minus s. Just now is zero point zero five or five percent minus zero point zero five, all right. And then uh, giving us the value of R two one uh, minus s is two point four one three ohm. Now there is a way to find the line current or the mature current. So then no difference between line current and mature current because it is connected in in star on y so is to get the covalence impedance zf <clears throat> so of the rotor circuit in parallel with the xm so then calculate the current as the phase voltage divided by the sum of the slip in the h as shown below so this is what we have uh, simplified the simplified the circuit so we have the terminal uh, covalence circuit over here where have been simplified into zf all right so this is zf consists of again rf plus the xf and this is coming from here all right this is coming from here so we have let's say this is zm equal to jsm and we have over here is jack sorry z2 uh, consists of r2 plus jx2 so what happened here is so this is these two are parallel so you try to uh, to simplify into a, a more uh, uh, what you call it uh, better uh, equivalent circuit so we have zf over here this is zm all right so parallel with z z2 okay so to so how to solve so this is zm over here all right and then zf over here the covalent impedance of the rotor circuit so we have over here this is the zm just now and over here is the Z2, which consists of uh, R2 plus JX, JX2. So just again, substitute the value of XM. This is from question. So we have R2. So this is J, or this is XM. This is what? This is R2 from question. So this is X2 from question. And solving this, giving us the ZF, the equivalent or the Tibinin uh, equivalent impedance is 2.47490 degree ohm. And since we analyze in, in a phase voltage, so don't forget from VT or V line uh, divided by square root 3. So you need to divide it by square root 3 in order to get the phase voltage, okay, which is 120 20 volts. So the line current IL is so uh, again, I L equal to I A. So no difference between the line current also the machine current or the phase current. So we have V phase. Again, this is from K V L in the previous equivalent circuit. So we have R1 plus J S1. So we have R F plus J X F. So the one we have simplified or we come up with the equivalent circuit. So 120 over 0 0.22 plus J. So again, this is R1, so this is X1, this is RF, the one we have obtained, we have calculated, and we have X, XF, okay? So solving uh, those steps, so you may get the IL to IA equal to 42.3, negative 25.7. So this means this is in uh, lagging 
condition. Okay, negative means lagging. Lagging power factor, and then B, the stator couple losses are okay. We can actually directly uh, calculate from this equation P S E L equal to three I A squared R R one. So this is the value, the magnitude of I A forty two point three. Okay, taken from here, square it, and then R one is actually private in question or you can take from here 0 0.22 so giving the psel equal to 1180 watt what about the agate power so agate power in this particular example or this particular equivalent circuit is equal to 3i2 squared r2 over s or you can refer to the equation this is actually i2 i a squared r rf or i2 squared rf so it's coming from oops it's coming from here actually is coming from here this is where the location of the uh, air gap power so since the only resistor in the original Boroto was uh, the circuit was r2 over s so if you go to the previous equivalent circuit the one i introduced to you uh, before we reach up to this slide so it showed that at the roto part or the uh, roto side we have only r2 over s that rep represent the uh, resistance in the original roto and the resistor intervening equivalent circuit is RF. Okay, this one we have simplified. The power consumed by intervening equivalent circuit must be the same as the power consumed by the original circuit. That means what happened here, the power that consumed by the intervening equivalent circuit is actually equal to the original rotor circuit, which is R2 over, over S. And thus, PAG, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, relate or uh, we can represent into this equation r3 r2 squared r2 over over 2 over s the original roto and here is the equivalent turbinian circuit or equivalent turbinian uh, resistor so i a squared uh, rf so rf 2.337 from here this is the value of rf right into here and then giving 12.54 kilowatt for dp so what about the P conversion? So once we have uh, calculate PAG, so multiply by 1 over S to get the conversion uh, or the power converted from article to mechanical 1 minus 0 0.05, the slips, okay, the bill of slip, and then giving us the P conversion equal to 11.92 kilowatt. So what about the new stock? So this is the equation. The new stock PAG over omega sine. So omega sine. So this is... Uh, Omega signs, so we have actually uh, n sin, all right, to make it simple, so divided by 9.55. If you are able to remember this uh, relationship, so you go ahead, just directly divide by 1.55, or you may have this uh, equation in order to convert from uh, n RPM into radian per second uh, to match the omega sin requirement so 2 pi radian over 1 revolution multiplied by 1 minute over 60 city second so where do we get 100 1800 or 1800 rpm so this is nothing but n uh, sin if you still remember this is equal to 120 fe over over p okay so in this particular example so you can go to back to the question. So Fe is 60 hertz and P, the number of pole is 4. So 1 and this is 3. So multiply 3 by 60, we have 1800, 1800 RPM. And then divided by 9.55 to get the value in omega, omega C. Okay. And then giving a new stock 60.5 meter, meter, meter. So about the output power, so P out equal to P conversion minus P mechanical, P losses, P uh, miscellaneous. So this is given as 300. Okay, so conversion uh, here. So mechanical here, 300. So minus 200, the core as well as the miscellaneous or the cell losses. And then the output speed and M equal to uh, 1 minus S and sin. So the slip. So uh, multiply by 100 and 8, 000, 1800, sorry, RPM, 17110 RPM. So therefore, the load top is, so uh, P out over omega, omega M. So this is the output power over here, all right? Okay, into here and then convert 
uh, RPM to rhythm per seconds, giving us the load torque equal to 96, 63.8 meter meter. So the overall efficiency, so output of P in, so out is 11.42. We have seen or we have calculated earlier. So we have P in 3 V phase IA cos theta. So calculate in phase. So this is the equation for uh, P in in phase. So we have 3 V phase 120 IA is 42.3. No problem because again this IA equal to I line. Okay, no problem. So we can use both. So 42.3 ampere and cos theta. Uh, 25.7 7 is taken from here you know, the beginning of the analysis we have IL equal to IA uh, so we have the angle 25.7 okay and then into here cos theta 25.7 just take the magnitude disregard the, the angle and then giving us the efficiency of the motor is equal to 83.2% and then finally the motor speed in RPM is 171 uh, 10 RPM, the motor speed and radian per second is again, so you need to change into radian per second. Okay, so this is quite besar lah, compared to the uh, the previous example. So now giving us the omega m equal to 179 radian per, radian per second. Okay, thank you very much for watching. So hopefully we will continue. Uh, I see you in the next video. So see you around. Have a nice day again. Signing off.